All right, I'm trying to create a YouTube video to address the hydraulic system on a R230 style SL500. Issue starts with this front lock cylinder um, on the on the roof, and um, a little ahead of myself on the video, but uh, to get to this. Uh, the headliner has to come out and you have to have it in service mode. Now, I'm not necessarily in, in, in the traditional service mode because um, my trunk did not close properly, which actually is a benefit because typically these are locked on the trunk lock assembly here. So, the goal here is to, I'm going to splice this one using Cabri Cabriolet Hydraulics out of Fort, uh, Fort Myers area, Florida. That eliminates the need to chase these lines all the way back to the pump. Now, the most common ones to go out on these are the, the trunk frame lock, which is here sorry here the cylinder there's one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side and then there's also the lift assist cylinder on the back so what i've been told is that once one seal is gone and you increase the pressure back in the system that these other ones start failing as well from the factory. Um, these I'm not going to splice. I'm going to actually take off all the way back to the pump because they're so close. The lines are, are very close here. You can see the line to, to this one uh, coming out to the pump. So nevertheless, Again, I was lucky um, that the that the trunk did not shut and close. I was able to pull it back. Typically, this would be in uh, in in service mode. If uh, you're in a situation like this as well, uh, there are some videos that basically show you just there's an Allen screw right there that there's a hole in the in the head headliner that allows you to get to that and it actually unlocks um and what i did is i basically pushed up on the back here to lift this by a few inches and just put something soft in there so i didn't scratch the paint that um is basically just the give me a little little distance between the roof and the windshield uh that allowed me to get the the screws out so, um, again, this is probably not, you would have this in, in true service mode with the trunk, but, um, I didn't have that luxury because I can't actually get the trunk open, uh, the traditional way it is, uh, it is locked and I can't open it yet. So hopefully this fix will alleviate that problem. Uh, the other, the other two that I will probably address at some point are the two for the roll bar back here, which apparently you have to get to from behind the seat. And um, anyway, that's uh, I'm gonna start here with these four and hopefully give you guys uh, some helpful hints along the way to make this uh, as easy as possible. All right, so I've removed the, the uh, cylinder and the way I had to do that was uh, to loosen this, this screw here. There are three of them. There's one there. So those two. And one down here on the other end. And then where the, the cylinder actually connects to the, to the uh, actuator here, um, there's a... Um, there's a key. I'll show it to you here real quick. So, 
not sure if you guys can see that, but there's a key there that you have to remove uh, from from here. Uh, this just pushes pushes out. I just stuck it in there so I knew where it went. And then there's another one back here that basically goes through this hole. Um, so you pop pop the key out and push push this up and out, and now you have access to the cylinder. So, um, Cabriolet Hydraulics tells you to uh, make your measurement from here, nine inches from here down. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove, remove these uh, uh, tie wraps. Uh, so nine inches down, you have to make a 90 degree cut. Um, and then nine inches down from this one so that they're actually staggered staggered lengths. So you know when you put it back in, which one's gonna go where. So um, there's the update here so far. Also something helpful, um, as you if you have to cut these, I basically just went and put a little mark on my uh, piece of wood here at nine inches. And then as the, the cylinder was kind of dangling, I clipped it to a, uh, a little piece of uh, like paint paddle or something um, that allows you to make a nice, nice clean cut uh, at 90 degrees there uh, at about the 99 inch mark. I don't think it's super critical to get it exactly nine inches, but they did indicate that they uh, they want you know as close to 90 degree cuts as possible. So a um, piece of board behind it might be helpful. All right, so for this next part, basically uh, everything back here has got to go, um, to my understanding. Again, this is the first time I've ever done this. Hoping, uh, uh, again, there's so little on YouTube, but um, nevertheless, uh, there is a guy that did a real nice job of uh, showing how to how to get this this portion out to get to to this cylinder here. Um, you may want to watch his video as well. But um, all of the steps that I'm going to do here are basically his steps in trying to get to these, uh, trying to get to these. The only thing that I don't have to do um, is get it in service mode um, because of the fact that um, we're, not, we're not clipped in here. So anyway, um, here we go. Okay, so um, for this portion, uh, there's a little tab here, and there are, I think, four tabs um, back along this ridge. Uh, I've snapped a couple of them already. Let me go to the other side, and I'll... Pretty easy. They just, uh, just follow this back, and you'll just feel a couple of them here, and you just snap them back. And then... Um, this one was already off. Uh, maybe there's one here. There we go. So it just pulls away from this, this back plastic piece here. And you can see these tabs that are connected to the, to the top cover. So this cover, uh, in order to get it out, you have to, uh, you have to remove this plastic piece here and this one here on the other side. Um, so that's next. All right, so once you've got those two covers off, next step is to use a, uh, I think it's a two, T30, to get this bottom uh, bolt out and then this whole assembly will come out. So it's, uh, it's this one here on the bottom. So once you have those two out, um, this piece will just slide forward and should be able to just remove this right on out of here. Yep. So um, next step, I think for me, I'm gonna remove the spare tire and get this back, this back, uh, this back piece off that was underneath the, uh, the cover. So I must admit, I am using uh, the gentleman video that uh, shows getting out that 
passenger side um, cylinder. Uh, this is a um, this is a T15 down here that I've already loosened up on both sides that you remove, and then uh, the center piece up here was kind of a bear to get out. Um, I started on this side and just started pulling and prying on the back, back, back in here, and was able to get it to pop, pop loose. Um, so once that's off and these two are out, uh, I think it's just a matter of, uh, of, of pulling this out and, uh, removing the centerpiece. So, um, I'll catch you guys later. So an edit on this is, uh, the reason why it may have been tough to get out, um, is because of these holes here. There may have been, I don't know this, but I heard something pop out and go down to the bottom and then I found, I found that push pin. Um, so there may be a push pin on this side and on that side that you need to pull out before uh, you yank this out. All right, so I've got that back piece out and I uh, did find that other push pin. So they are indeed connected in these holes. Um, Probably not critical to have that on there, but nevertheless, the next step is going to be uh, removing these carpets. And you can see these push pins located here. And um, I think there's one back there too. Yep, way underneath there. You've got these two down here on the bottom and this one here in the back. Now, um, I want to point something out. Um, I thought it might be easier. Oh, and the other thing too, uh, that's got to be removed with a T30 right there. There's an electrical connection uh, underneath that. You just uh, um, disconnect that. Um, I've contemplated, considering I've got to get to the cylinder here, removing this back piece. Um, which looks actually kind of involved, um, which I think considering the, the pump and the lines are right here and very close, and I may be able to disconnect that clip there and that clip there. And once the lines are removed, just pull it up through this hole, uh, which I think is what I'm gonna do instead of taking this back piece off um, entirely. And then obviously I'm gonna remove this side as well uh, to get to this cylinder, which should be pretty much the same steps as this side. So uh, there you have it. We'll keep you posted. Forgot to mention, there's a couple of, of additional items that need to be removed. Um, this on the passenger side, that one on the driver side. If you go underneath there, there's a, I just took it off, um, a little, I don't even know what's supposed to be behind there, but um, there's two little plastic, one plastic piece there and one plastic piece here that um, you just pull out. comes out on both sides um, yeah and I would say if the Germans spent as much time engineering their cylinders as they did their carpets uh, we wouldn't be having this issue So uh, this is the removal of this piece here. Um, is that T T30? Removed, and uh, you just have to take that connector off there, and you should be good to go. Oh, and uh, this piece here was removed. 
got to do that over on the other side uh, take that switch off but this side's ready to come out now um, so I got the carpet out on this side uh, and when I was taking this piece off uh, I noticed there's uh, there's some hydraulic fluid down here um, and it was actually on the bottom part of this piece um, which uh, I have no idea why I'm thinking maybe it has something to do with something up here but if anybody has any insight I would greatly appreciate that um, so maybe an update on that after I find out an answer uh, maybe I'll see what's going on over on the other side too but back to the task at hand here so this um, is the mechanism and I need to remove this uh, I believe it's a no it's it's a T30 I guess um, and and this and then we'll be able to remove uh, it's hard to see be able to remove this cylinder here um, I believe based on the other guy's video that if you push this down it gets it into this position here which is pretty easy to work on then as you see we've got the lines that are trailing down under here and then we're going to uh, pop these open all the way across over to the pump so um, anyway that's the plan so as you can see as you're looking down um, it is threaded on that side um, so just remember that as you're putting it back in so that's facing inward towards the trunk all right so same story on the back one um, this is threaded uh, just on the inside and the longer it's a longer bolt now um, I don't think I've pointed this out yet but all these cables are numbered see that 94 and 34 um, but anyway with those two bolts out this is ready to be removed and just a couple zip ties and then we're back um, we're back to the pump so that one's out okay driver's side has been removed and going to remove that cylinder just move across here real quick next step after this so here's the cylinder we can trace trace that back it's pretty close so with these um, just as an FYI I'm not splicing these I'm actually taking them all the way back to the pump which you can see what I'm gonna do um, I've already taken a couple of these these are 10 millimeter uh, 10 millimeter bolts I haven't taken these two off back here yet but I'm gonna take those two off um, I was instructed by the previous youtuber that that needs to be turned two turns um, counterclockwise to relieve pressure and then this switch needs to be removed here um, probably to get it to lay over on its side uh, to access the lines so that's uh, that's what we're gonna do next okay so um, I did I did relieve that and um, you can actually feel where it 
did release some pressure um, so it goes around and it actually stops right there so and then um, I guess you tighten it back up once you relieve the pressure and um, Sorry guys, there we go. Once I free these lines up a little bit, I'll be able to uh, get it on its side a little bit better, but that's the general gist of it. Okay, so I've removed the pat or driver's side, and I think I mentioned earlier that we've got numbers um, 93, uh, and 33 and we can tie that back to their location on the on the pump I've turned the pump sideways uh, released the pressure uh, as I showed you earlier and um, removed the uh, the switch that was uh, tied in here so at this point I think my uh, assumption of um, being able to remove this one is going to work. I think what I'll do is so it's these two 92 and 90 or uh, 92 and 32 that when I take these off, there's four uh, Allens there. I think there's one behind here as well. Uh, and then this uh, this plate just slides down and allows you to pull pull these right out of the pump so I'm going to take these out and also um, the ones for each side of the um, of the trunk and hopefully I'll be able to lift this one right out the top um, and so that is uh, that's pretty much it for now okay so um, you can see uh, I need 92, 32. Here's 94 and 34 back here. And then um, this line is 93 and 33. So here's 93 and 33. So what I'm going to do is remove this last hex nut here and this you can see there are holes here and this whole plate slides forward it's hard to do with one hand but uh, slides forward to give you access there we go See how it's kind of moving forward now, um, which will allow me to move to, to, to take these out. So um, that's pretty much it. So I'll show you uh, once the lines are out. Okay, I'll just show you. I, I basically just took a screwdriver, kind of got on the back side here and pushed this over. I'll show you just how easy these come out. So here's here's 94. Just pulls out here's uh, 92 32s back here and you see here um, there are numbers uh, so there's so if you forget where they go as you remember I need to get 93 out so here's 93 and um, that should help you but that's how you take those out okay so um, I'm attempting to get these out um, first of all uh, this is the clip on the top 
So what I did, this thing here, which seems to be some sort of an adjustment, uh, I just pulled this out. Now, the question is whether the trunk is going to stay up after I take this out. Um, I know there is a little bit of pressure on the other side. Um, I may try and prop this up somehow before I actually take this off, but um, what I did to get this off, it's kind of an interesting um, snap, but I just stuck a little screwdriver in it and was able to uh, push it down and see how it kind of comes right out of here. Uh, and then there's one on the bottom that I've got to get off. And we'll see if this hood or this roof will stay open. So uh, I was able to remove, remove this. Um, it actually pulls out uh, to, the, to the side this way. Um, the, the, the trunk in this orientation, I actually had this propped up in here just in case it fell forward. Um, but the tendency is for, once it's not on there, for it to fall backwards. And it's uh, definitely not going to go anywhere. Um, so I think, um, I think I'm good. I'm going to take that last one out down there and we should be able to pull this right out. Okay, so it's actually threw me for a little bit of a loop here. There's um, the plastic housing here that basically uh, surrounds, surrounds the cylinder. This went around here. Um, I haven't got it out yet, but you can see down there, that piece actually wraps around the cylinder as well. Um, that little clip, which is here, came out while I was trying to take this out, but that, um, I'm not sure if that's gonna mess up my adjustment later on down the road line. Um, that might be something I might need to call somebody on, but um, nevertheless, the um, there's an electrical connection down there as well so um and just uh fyi this this cylinder is leaking so i've actually found the uh this cylinder was leaking underneath and this one's leaking so it uh these these are definitely starting to fail um so anyway uh i think i'll be able to just slide this out the bottom uh, without having to take anything else off here. But there's, uh, we've got this bracket here, perhaps. Um, but I think I'll be able to get it out as is. That was a little harder than I thought. Um, that plastic piece should not come off um, because it can't come off because of that thickness can't pull through that that hole there so um, there is an electrical connection right there which I pulled off here um, and so that allowed me to um, to fish to fish the whole unit out um, out of there so um, the bottom goes as you know had that bolt that went through here and uh, the top just connects connects here so um, that uh, that's it so I've got all three cylinders out um, I'm thinking about the pump and considering I'm going to be sending these units out uh, just so I don't contaminate this system is putting some tape over these holes 
um, so that we don't have any problems um, contaminating the system because it's going to be probably a couple days before um, I get these back at least and I'm thinking probably uh, next week I'll be able to uh, to install these so um, yeah a lot of work here guys but uh, I'll let you know how it all works out once I got it buttoned up